Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to talk about how to optimize some of your raw imports into Lightroom, especially as it pertains to real estate photography. Now this will cover just about anything that you want to import into Lightroom from a raw file, but it really pertains to a real estate photography especially and other types of genres that really have to do with commercial work where colors really count. Now as you know from previous videos, that I've shown. In fact, here just a few video goes. I have a, a link up here. You can go take a look at that where uh, we thought something might look like color cast, but it wasn't because sure enough, Adobe was interpreting the raw files incorrectly. Now, this is a very common problem uh, that you'll see uh, because once again, as covered in that video and also covered in some of my books, these uh, software programs by third parties like Adobe don't know how to properly really interpret everything in a raw file that comes from a camera. So a camera manufacturer, an OEM like Nikon, Canon, Sony, they have their own algorithms that they apply on top of what's just recorded on the sensor. So if somebody tells you that a raw file is nothing but just sensor information, they're not quite correct because there is a portion of it that has some other information. When you bring that into Adobe, you're going to get some problems because some of that information is going to be missing. So there's other things though that are going on with Lightroom as they're trying to make improvements improvements for the general public, but not necessarily professionals such as yourself that would be shooting for real estate photography. So I'm going to cover all that in this tutorial to give an overview of what's going on, understand what's going on behind the scenes, what you can do to correct some of that, and some various options as well. You ready to get started and take a look at all this? Let's get started. So to use this example, I'm going to use this particular shot. This is a finished product shot that was done for a house here last week. Now, a lot of lighting challenges that were in this to overcome, and I did this in Lightroom and Photoshop for a reason. There's just too many files to try to use anything otherwise. It's a very efficient workflow, but let's take a look at what we were up against. So this is just one of those shots out of it, and you can see me here being distorted, making my old man belly even stick out a little farther. But the point of the matter is, is that this is what it looked like like when I was doing this two flash composite, there's by the way an Explorer 600 near the camera. I'm holding just a speed light over here and then I walked to the other side and flashed it. But I'm just going to use this image as an example of what happens when I import this into Lightroom. Now I know this was what was on the back of the camera because I used OEM software uh, to convert it. And I'm going to get to that in just a second. Now if I though import the raw file itself into Lightroom, this is what happens and it gets into this muddled mess. So what you may see at first is like you bring up your picture, it looks like this. Within a second, it then turns into this. That's because Lightroom finally debayered this. In other words, it decoded the raw file. Now, very simple. One thing that you can correct very quickly uh, to change this is that recently Adobe has been using a default treatment profile called Adobe Color, and you can change that. It's now located up here under Treatment. It used to be in the calibration section, but you can change it. You can see how it's selected as Adobe Color. Change that to Adobe Standard, and you can see that tones it down. The idea behind Adobe Color, according to some of Adobe's blogs, is that it was uh, based off of user feedback to give more richer tones. Well, we aren't really after that in real estate photography. In most product photography, you would not want that either. Now, they've got a whole bunch of other profiles that you can select from, from this uh, little uh, browser browser that they have here. I'm not going to use any of that. I'm just going to suggest for doing real estate photography, make sure that you have that to Adobe Standard. Now, the nice thing is, is that when you go to create a preset, you can then include that. So if you have, for instance, like if I take one of my presets down here, and I can then edit it and save it as that with the, I can update it with the current settings, which would have Adobe Standard. If not, if I were to create a new preset, I can then select, if I were to select everything in here, I can select Treatment and Profile. That's what that is right there, and it would make sure to use Adobe Standard. So first and foremost, that's the easiest thing to start getting uh, more correct. Now, what I did cover too in the previous video that I mentioned here before getting into the computer is that I do have that video online for how to do a quick color correction based off of your proper gray point in Photoshop while you're post-processing. So you might want to look at that once again. There's a link up there in the, in the top right to that particular video. 
But I want to get into really what's going on. Why did this get so screwed up? It's more than just colors. It's more than just what uh, I showed uh, in that prior video on colors. And it's more than just changing your color profile to Adobe Standard like we did here. So what's going on is that there's uh, settings in the RAW file that aren't being picked up. So one of the common things in Nikon world, this is known as the active delighting. In Canon, it's known as auto lighting optimizer. In Sony, it's known as dynamic range optimizer. And all of those things will take a picture that normally hit the sensor like this, that's without any of the uh, active D lighting on, for instance, on an icon camera, and then this is what it looks like when active D lighting was applied to it. So in a lot of ways, it's applying somewhat of a tone curve. And you might think to yourself, well, why don't I just shut that off in the camera and not use that at all? Well, it has some great advantages. It's more than just adjusting a tone curve, these companies, the manufacturer of Nikon, Canon, Sony, they all know how to apply a better algorithm across the entire range of the photo. Let's take a closer look. So this happens to be Capture NXD. This is Nikon's OEM software that knows how to interpret everything out of the camera. If you have a Canon, then you want to use their software called Digital Photo Professional. If you're using Sony, look at Capture One Express. And each of those will have a different setting. Once again, Nikon's Active D Lighting, Canon is Auto Lighting Optimizer, and Sony is Dynamic Range Optimizer. Since this is Nikon, I'm using Active D Lighting in their Capture capture NXD software. And you can see over here on this side, I can make that to different settings. Right now it's how I shot it, which was auto out of the camera. It does a pretty good job. Look what happens if I were to turn that off. Immediately the darks go darker, the highlights go brighter. It loses the type of contrast that really made this a nice picture. So let's put that back to where it was. Let's take another picture of that, another view. So here's one once again with uh, the active D lighting on. And if we were to turn that off, this is what we have. So I don't know why I'd want to turn active D lighting off. I like that. And so for this reason, using active D lighting, I recommend for all exterior photos, and by the way, for designer work and portraits, other higher end work too, um, always use your OEM software to then decode your RAW files. Then you can either convert those to TIFFs and then import them into Lightroom, which then won't affect anything with the RAW files. They'll then be already rendered properly with the active D lighting or auto light optimizer, dynamic range optimizer, depending on what type of camera you're using. And then you can edit it from there. So for instance, another thing too that I could do in this particular software is I can open this uh, particular file. Once I've made all the adjustments I want, I like what it is, I can open it with Photoshop. To do that, by the way, if you have uh, Capture NXD, you'd first register the program. You'd uh, go ahead and find where it is. You could uh, put that in and add another program to that. So anyways, that's fine. For instance, I could add other programs that are here that uh, aren't listed yet, but I'm not worried about that. So anyways, I can open this though into Photoshop, and if I needed to then, I can make some changes. Now I usually just convert this and then import this into Lightroom, but it's basically the same thing. If you just wanted to do it this way, you could just take this and use Camera Raw Filter, and you can apply the presets you already have. For instance, I have a preset that I really love, and it's in my exterior book, and it's called Pools and Pools Light. If I apply that to that, I can then go over once again into this uh, area, I can fiddle around around with it, maybe up the saturation a bit, and then we're fine. I could go ahead and then save that to whatever I want. So when I just imported it, it was like this, and then I made these changes to it. So that's all that I needed to do, right? To take it from the standard using active D-lighting, or in the other cases of the other uh, camera manufacturers, their own type of optimizers, and then I've got the best of both worlds. I can still use Adobe products to do that. Now, what if we don't want to do that? So interior, uh, files, interior uh, portion of our shoot tends to have many, many, many more files. It's way too complex and way too time consuming to turn all these into TIFFs and import them as TIFFs and all that. So there's a couple things you can do. You can imitate what active D lighting or auto lighting optimizer, whatever, is using. And you can do that with a tone curve. So let's go back to where we were here. And let's say that we applied our standard preset. 
which then I also applied to camera standard, which we have up here, excuse me, Adobe standard. I could also play around with making a change on my tone curve, and I could then save this also as a preset. So a common one here would be taking, say, if I took my lights down to about 50, and then I took my darks up to about, let's say, 25, now I'm starting to get closer to what I had for when the active delighting was there. Now it's not exactly the same. In fact, I can take a look here at a view before and after to kind of see where I was. And you can see there's some improvement here after the fact of what I did it. But if I use a reference photo, and I use the reference photo here from Capture NXD, which was the um, this was then without uh, anything, just using the active delighting. It's still not there. And by the way, if you never use the reference area, it's just over here. Select that, and you just drag whatever reference picture you want. And you can see that's the reference and, and active. So we're still not there uh, to where we should be. But when we take a look, though, at the split screen, we can see that we're definitely improving ourselves uh, for what we had. So that's, that is one option uh, that you can uh, apply to it if you need to. Uh, once again, though, a lot of this stuff wouldn't be done in a profile. And you can see what it did here on the tone curve, really nice uh, adjustment there. Some of this though is covered when we finally get to our final bump. So for instance, if I were to, we'll just jump right ahead here without post-processing the whole thing, after applying my standard uh, stuff to it, when we apply a regular bump to it, we're doing things like you know lowering the highlights, upping the whites, upping the shadows, all those type of things start getting us closer to where we need to be for the final product. So anyways, once again, to recap, if you are seeing some changes uh, as you're going through your workflow, as you start importing a picture into uh, Lightroom, if it starts looking like this, but then all of a sudden it turns into something like this. First thing that you want to do from going from what's nice into Adobe kind of crushing it is you want to make sure that you're choosing Adobe Standard up here and then you can if you need to apply a tone curve. Either and then of course the third step is and I show in that other video is that you can go in and start changing your uh, color on a curves layer to try to adjust for some of that. Of course then in post -process processing everything's going to be fine. For exterior photos I recommend only using OEM software to that way you can apply the advantages of those optimizers depending on what camera software you're using whatever camera manufacturer and then turn those into TIFFs bring those in the Lightroom and then apply the final bumps there. So you may think to yourself, well, why am I using Lightroom? Why am I using Adobe products if that's the problem? Well, the fact is that they're still very efficient for the workflow. As you can see, using like Capture NXD or if you were using DPP by Canon or Sony's software, they just are a little clunky. They don't have Photoshop, so to work with them seamlessly, it's very difficult and time is of the essence. So by making some minor adjustments along the way, you can get through those interior shots fairly quick. If you're shooting for a designer and in two hours, time you're only going to get 10 photos, which is very common working with designers as you're working staging and you charge by the hour. It's worthwhile to just use your OEM software, turn those into TIFFs, and then bring them into the Adobe workflow. Same thing goes for all exterior photos as I recommend in the exterior book. And by the way, if you don't have any of my books, uh, there's a link down in the description for this video. It has a, a link to all books uh, within my real estate photography series. But as I recommend in the exteriors book, just go ahead and convert them out of your OEM software for all your your exterior work into TIFFs, import them into Lightroom. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that by knowing some of these techniques of what's going on with the optimization of your camera's algorithms, that you can then start adjusting some of what you need to get better photographs when you start importing it into Lightroom. I hope you can use this for some of your photography. And if you did like this tutorial, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.